One of the most popular questions we get here at the Tutorial Bucket site is, where the devil do you get those high resolution images that you work on? There's a couple of good places that I can recommend, the first of which is Flickr. Flickr is a public upload website for images and it has literally millions upon millions of images. But if you want to get high resolution images to work with, that's a little bit trickier. We have to go to Flickr's home page and I've got to say if you don't have an account it's worthwhile creating one because there are far more images inside of Flickr. If you log in with a user ID you get access to much more in the image database. But I'm just going to use this as a casual visitor. I'll click on the search button and once we go to search we get to the search page and the first thing we need to do here is choose advanced search. If you want to get hold of these high resolution images you can't just use the regular old search. So we go to the advanced search page. You now put in the tags or words you want to use for your search and I'll put in a couple that I know will give us a, a decent result. I'll put in studio portrait and you can see there I've used it before. We can do two searches on this, one for full text and one for tags. It is worth doing both of them because you will get slightly different results, in some cases radically different results. You need to restrict the search content type to photos, videos and media type to only photos. You don't really want the videos. And here is the big one. This thing here, Creative Commons. You must search for Creative Commons licensed content. Creative Commons is a substitute for the standard copyright system. It means that you can use these, at the very least, to practice on. If you need to use them for commercial projects, well then restrict your search to find use for commercial or find content to modify, adapt or build upon. You can read more about the Creative Commons licenses under the Learn More link very worthwhile. Okay, now that we've got this put in, we can now hit search. And this will then come back with a list of results, which as you can see, 11,629. There's lots of images here. Just scroll down, grab the first decent looking one. Yep, that looks good to me. Click on the image. Takes us into the Flickr stream. And here is the difference, if you've done a Flickr search before, is you get this little button up here called All Sizes. That means that there are several sizes available that you can download. So click on All Sizes, and it will automatically take you into the large size, which is pretty good already. But if you then want to go the whole hog, go to the original size and let it download. This could take a little bit of time and you need to let your little egg timer on your icon finish doing its download. Okay, once we've got this download, I'll just see how it's progressing. It looks like it's almost there. Yep. You can see the size of the image. They are very, very big and they're ideal for working on. Now you can download this in a couple of ways. I'll just bring this back over. You can use the download original size which is fair enough, that will then allow you to download and save it to wherever you want. But I want to show you a nice little trick that you can do with Adobe's Bridge program, which is part of Photoshop. If you haven't used Bridge before, you should look at it because it's a much better way of handling your images. Once you get the image that you want to use fully loaded up on your screen, I'll just drag this over so you can see my Bridge program over here. Think of it as a substitute for the standard Windows or Mac Finder and Explorer functions. You can then click and drag on the image right into Bridge and drop it. That is just fantastic. Now sometimes you're going to get this really weird little effect, but don't worry about that. It tends to go away after a day or two. Double click on the image, bang, right into Photoshop. It's a really good function, saves lots of time. Unfortunately, you can't really drag and drop straight from your web browser into Photoshop, but this is nearly as good. So it's a very effective function. Okay, I'm going to go back to the original search page, drag this back in, come back a couple of steps here, and we'll have a look at the results. I want to refine this again. I'm going to do an advanced search again. I'm going to keep it with Studio Portrait, but this time I'm going to switch it to Tags only. The results will be different, but you must recheck your search by media type to only photos and only search within Creative Commons licensed content. Really annoying, but you have to do it.
then search again. This time the results that come back will look a little bit different. And here we go. Different sets of images. Some very nice portraits in here. And when you're running your searches for portraits, uh, remember some of these images, in fact a very large number of the images, will have already been processed extensively with Photoshop. So you can refine your search a little bit to try and pick up images that maybe haven't been processed quite so much. But either way, the basic search that I've just run with Studio Portrait will return you some very usable results at very large sizes. Okay, the second website that's worth using for finding high resolution images is this one. It's called Stock Exchange or www.sxc.hu. This is absolutely necessary. You need to log into this site to really use it. You can search the database without logging in, but if you want to actually download things, you need to log in. The account's free. They don't bother you with spam mail, so it's quite safe. I'm not signed in, but I'll just do a quick little search just to show you the content. Very, very large database split up into all sorts of categories. It's also searchable with a search box at the side, even though they haven't bothered labeling it as a search box. And I'll just do a quick little search on the category here for people. There we are, people. And I'll do close-up eyes, for example. And there we get some results. And we'll just try one of those eyes. Let's say this one down here. Click one time. Gives you a preview of it. And there is a download button. The image size itself is very, very big, as you can see, 1200 by 1448. Maybe not as big as some of the Flickr images, but big enough to be used. And once you hit download, it's going to say log in. So I'm just going to freeze the video for one moment while I log in. I don't want you seeing what my login is. OK, I've logged myself in, and my image is now downloading. And there's the size. It's pretty substantial. They're big images. Once again, I'll use my same little trick. I'll drag this across into Bridge, drop it into place, and there you are, ready to jump into Photoshop with a simple double click, and bang, there it is. Hope that helps you and gives you some practice material so you can work with our tutorials and get those Photoshop skills up to scratch.